Hi, this is Bob Sorrentino from Italian Roots and Genealogy. You can find us on Facebook, uh, and you could also find the blog at www.italiangenealogy.blog. And I'm here today with Diana Olivieri, and we're going to talk about her Italian roots. So welcome, Diana. Thanks for being here. Hi, thank you. Thank you for having me. If, if I'm correct, you're originally from Staten Island? Is yes. that where you're from? Where yes. Born? Yeah, Staten Island. <laughs> probably probably by way of Brooklyn, I'm sure. Uh, on my dad, my dad, yeah. Uh, my mom was born on Staten Island. Oh, no, sorry. She was born in Manhattan, but raised on, in Staten Island. Oh, Staten so where in Manhattan was she born? Um, I'm not sure which hospital, but they, they didn't live in Manhattan. They, I guess that's where they went. Oh, they the just, she just went there to get born. Yeah, to get born. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and my dad was actually born also in Manhattan, but they had already moved to Brooklyn um, at that point. So, yeah, it was born and raised in Brooklyn because my grandparents, when they came uh, through Ellis Island on my dad's side, just settled directly in Brooklyn because that's where they had already um, relatives and some ties. But my mom's family went uh, to Manhattan first uh, and then to Staten Island. A lot of people made that trip. Us, yeah. uh, those of us from Queens didn't make that trip to Staten Island. That's only no, the no. Brooklyn people went that way. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And then on my mom's side, my mom's father's family uh, also lived in uh, near Arthur Avenue in the Bronx for a short period of time after Manhattan and then wound up in Staten Island for a whole bunch of reasons why they came here. And my, my dad wound up moving here because when he met my mom in Brooklyn, in a nightclub, <laughs> uh, they <laughs> they decided that uh, they were going to move here uh, to Staten Island. And was, long story, but my mom had been widow, uh, widowed and my brother was already living here and knew, you know, his grandparents here on Staten Island. And she didn't want to change, I guess, schools and stuff like that. So my dad wound up moving to, to Staten Island and kind of, I think now he's lost his Brooklyn accent after 80 something years. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say he's probably he's probably close to my I'm I'm 72 so he's, he's 83 probably, yeah 83 but, but, oh, so he so he's well, yeah so he's yeah. like my older cousins yeah yeah because my mom my mom was married already uh pretty young like 23 and uh, had my brother and then her her husband died but she waited like about 10 years to start dating so uh my, yeah I guess my parents were a little older for the time a lot of my friends parents are a little bit younger like in the 70s yeah, 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 yeah. That's like, like, that's like me and my brother. But I have yeah. cousins. My, my, my oldest cousin is ninety-two. Oh yeah. And and my youngest cousin is, I guess she's about sixty-six. Yeah. So yeah. we got this. Wild. How many cousins do you have? I have like about thirty cousins on my dad's side. Yeah, <laughs> I have twenty-three. I yeah. have twenty-three on my mom's side. My my yeah. father's side um, was. Uh, probably was a lot less than that, maybe 15 or something. Yeah, like. I have less on my mom's side more because my dad has uh, there were seven children, so yeah, there's more, more, more cousins on that side than my mom's uh, has three siblings. Had so, yeah. so now, where, where, um, where from Italy did they come? Okay, so my dad's parents are both from the same town, it was an arranged marriage, uh, from Corato in Bari in Puglia. So uh, if you want, I can tell you a little bit. I find this story very interesting, very short story. Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> My grandfather came when he was 18 to New York, wanted to get married after he was here for a while, went went back to Italy for an arranged marriage with another girl, who's not my grandmother, uh, his first wife, Adelaide, brought her back to, brought her, he went there to marry her, brought her to New York, whatever, a few months later, she came and they had uh, my uncle Tony, and uh, when she was pregnant with the second child, she died in childbirth at the age of 23. So here's my grandfather, you know, in his 20s, working in Manhattan, widowed, a widower with a three-year-old. And he's like, oh, gosh, what am I going to do? I'm not going back to Italy. So uh, there's a neighboring family who were they were in contact with. Uh, and they said, well, Rosa, Rosa is going to come to America. Rosa's single. And 19, oh, sorry, my grandfather was 37. Sorry, he, it was a while before he got married and, and had the first wife. Um, so Rosa, 19, decides she's going to dump her Italian boyfriend. No, she was. She said, I had a boyfriend, but they told me, you know, he wanted, uh, you know, a wife. And uh, your grandfather was very good looking. So uh, I did it. 
But I don't really think she had much of a choice, to be honest with you, because what were her options in uh, 1937 as a 19-year-old in in this small town in Bali? So uh, she came over, and uh, they wind up having uh, three more. My dad... Uh, oh, sorry. They, they, what I wanted to tell you, the interesting thing was, when my grandfather went back for the arranged uh, marriage, he stayed a little while. And I guess my grandmother must have gotten pregnant in celebrating the marriage because my uncle was born uh, not long after that. And my grandfather returned to the U.S. to, to New York uh, by boat, obviously alone. And she came later when my uncle was eight months old. But he left the three year old with her because he said, I have to work. And, you know, she couldn't come right away, I guess, for whatever reason, maybe laws and stuff like that. But um uh, it's a crazy story because my uncle didn't even know that he was actually born an American citizen in Italy because my grandfather had already naturalized. And uh, we yeah. found this all out later uh, with, you know, Ellis Island documents and stuff like that. And they actually added my grandfather, who was born in Italy, uh, my, uh, my, to my uncle that was born in Italy. They actually added him on to my first uncle born in America's passport. And you see... Page added at the Naples consulate, brother Vincenzo born in Italy, and he was eight months old on the boat. So anyway, Corato, and um, that's where they're from, the same town on my mom, uh, my dad's side. Um, and it's it's really, my dad's side is, and story is so complex and crazy, I probably need three days to explain everything. But uh, um, my mom's side are from two different places. Uh, my maternal grandmother was actually born uh, on 183 in 183 Mulberry Street in Little Italy, uh, but her parents had come maybe a year and a half before from uh, two places uh, very near to each other, um, Trevinara, which is Avellino, uh, Campania, uh, 40 minutes from Naples, and um, another very very small town called Forca, which is Provincia di Benevento, but it's right next to Trevinara. But they met in America working in the sweatshops as seamstresses and tailors. Um, and you know how it was, but they would find people that, you know, uh, were from the same area somehow. Uh, so they went to uh, having my grandma and her siblings in Little Italy, uh, but again, from Campania and uh, uh, my mom's dad uh, from Melfi. So uh, Potenza Basilicata, so all the South, uh, but during, my research uh, that I've done on my dad's, uh, my mom's dad, uh, three generations before my grandfather, they were actually from L'Aquila, Abruzzo. Ah. Liberatore is the name. So they were originally somehow that Liberatore family was from Abruzzo. I don't know. They migrated to Basilicata for some reason, maybe for work or whatever. And uh, they were master tailors. They had a tailor shop and everything. So I'm assuming maybe they started the tailoring and in Abruzzo and then brought it to Basilicata. Anyway, so all from the South, what does a Southern Italian person look like? I can't tell you because my dad's <laughs> side is fair and freckles. And my mom's mom is dark olive skin. I have green eyes. My hair is like auburn-y. I, I don't even look like my sister or my brother. Uh, my, my, um, my full siblings look completely Italian and I, I really don't anyway. <laughs> so, well, that's, so that's interesting now because people think that you're supposed to have the same DNA. Have you done DNA? And have yes, I have. And sister, have yes, I have. And sisters? Uh, my sister and my brother have not. My parents uh, they have, have done to do it. it so you could see what the combination yeah, is. Yeah. But I told them you're screwing me up now because <laughs> yes. uh, my kids have done it. And I've actually seen some things in my kids that they, it says they got it from me, but doesn't show up on my DNA. Mm -hmm. which is interesting yeah. yeah um but uh yeah my parents did it and i actually uh got my great aunt my grandmother has been dead for oh, like since i think 2003 or whatever so she didn't get to do it but my great aunt just died last year at the age of 100 and when she was 99 um i asked her if she wanted to do it and she said sure i mean i know it's better to have a male but i mean it's better than nothing so um well, I've heard it's better to have the male line, but uh, she did it. And we found some interesting stuff too. I mean, obviously uh, it's, in, it follows the yes, Southern Italy, but um, there was a family rumor that we're still, we have a little bit of a brick wall that we haven't been able to solve. Um, but just someone being born in Northern Italy, 
But, uh, you know, of course, Northern Italy comes up on a lot of Southern Italians DNA, too. So it's hard to tell if that story is actually true. Anyway, I'm still working on it. <laughs> well, yeah. And, you know, that's that's interesting because my wife is she's she's half Puerto Rican and half uh. Sicilian. Right. She's got blue eyes. I mean, she's yeah. fair. I mean, she's like fair as fair could be. Yeah. You know, and um, but she's got a mix of like everything. And, yeah. and probably from Sicily, you know, because again, to your point, what does an Italian look like? We could look like anything. Anything. I mean, I I also had a lot of Greek DNA, um, Albanian, Croatian. Mm-hmm. Um, again, it said mostly Southern Italy. There was a little Northern Italian, like 10% or something. Um, and there was like 2% German. I'm like, it's possible, you know, whoever came. I mean, it also could just be a fluke. You don't really know. And also they keep changing the DNA results yeah. because they're doing more testing. So it's like every time they say something, it changes. <laughs> Uh, but it is interesting now that you can see which came from the maternal line, which came from the uh, maternal and paternal line, which is which is pretty interesting. Yeah. So I, I definitely did that because um, I wound up meeting some distant cousins and they shared some pictures of, you know, people that I had known I knew existed and I had seen their like headstone at, at the cemetery, but I didn't know what they looked like. And to finally see like some of their pictures, they were they were like siblings of my great grandparents. They weren't any anybody directly, you know, related to me. Yeah, but, but there's still, you know, there's 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 still a connection. There. Yes, and oh, this is what Alessandro looks like. It was uh my great grandfather's one of his brothers who who did come to America as well, uh, because not only did my grandparents come, my many of my great grandparents also came, either at the same time or later on. And I've even had one, uh, I think it was great grandparent or a gr- great great that came to America at the age of 70 and wound up dying in America. Mm. I-, I was thinking maybe she's getting elderly and they said, hey, come and we'll take care of you here and, you know, we'll pay for everything. So I found some crazy stuff that, you know, I didn't even know that my grandmother knew her grandfather who came over to America as an older adult, like I said, that maybe like 50 or 60 and wind up dying here. But she never, she never talked about it because she was a child at herself. She, she probably doesn't even remember him. She was born yeah, in 1912 yeah, yeah. and he came, I think in 1913 or 14. And then he died shortly after. So like I said, wow, you didn't you never told us, but she probably doesn't re- remember. Well, and that's unusual for the, for the older ones to, to, to come. And yes. In, in my grandparents case, they left, they left their younger, their, they they were oldest son with mm. his grandparents. Yeah, and he didn't come until they're from they're from Torito, which is you know I don't know not that far from Corrado. Uh, uh, flies. Yeah, and uh, they didn't come over till the fifties. So my whole yeah. cousins were all born in Italy. Yeah, the- no, it's crazy. The, the The crazy thing is, is that um, some of them, which I I found really weird, was that like um, not all of them came because my my dad's mother she left her family she only i don't even know if she ever saw her parents again maybe once when she went back on a, on a, a trip um but it wasn't all of them but you know how many great grandparents do you have eight i don't even know <laughs> you know <laughs> yeah i'm like you uh, where did you where did you four. go where did you go you know when i look at the chart you know online uh, it's clear to me but i'm trying to think not all of them came but some of them did so it was pretty interesting so now you've 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 gone back, yes? I've gone back. So I've gone back, but not full time. It's between like eight and nine months a year. I've been doing that since 2019. So my original plan oh, so I didn't, was- so, mm-hmm. so you just you didn't just go back. You, you go I back move and, and live stay. there. Yeah, I have an apartment, <laughs> I have a job. Wow, yeah. that's great. Yeah, yeah. So I only wanted to go maybe for like a year to check it out and teach English and study Italian because I was very obsessed with, uh, my family didn't speak Italian, obviously spoke Parese, Napoletano, but um, I always wanted to learn at least Napoletano, uh, but I said, mm, you know, I understand a little bit just from hearing my grandmother now and then, and Parese was very sporadic, so she would teach us little words here and there, but she did not want anyone, including my dad and his siblings, to speak that language. It was like, no, you're American, stop speaking that, yeah. stop repeating, and they got slapped for repeating really? it at home but my grandparents did not on my dad's side no my grandmother did not speak 
English well. So, you know, they, they would try to communicate with her and she'd say, no, answer me in English, you know, even if she didn't speak well herself. Um, but uh, I wanted to to learn standard Italian. And I was studying here in New York um, for two years. And I just said, oh, you know, I really just need to be, I can immerse myself as, with the TV and the radio and Netflix, but, and I talked to people and stuff, but I just really wanted um, uh, a more, a, a better uh, grip on the language. So I said, well, I also want to teach English. And I, I that wasn't my job in New York. Uh, I did some volunteering and stuff, but it wasn't my job. I worked in fashion. Following in the footsteps of my mom's, most of my mom's family being in the fashion industry, they were tailors, seamstresses, and my great grandfather became a fashion designer in New York. So I was always very, in even though I didn't know him, I was always interested in that uh, field. So I went into fashion, but uh, I said, no, you know, I really want to live in the South. I really want to live where my grandparents, whichever side you know i just want to live in some place that that they came from or near to where near to a place where they came from so so i like languages and i am studying italian so i'd like to teach english because uh you know it's it's fun and uh you can also learn while you teach so you know i've learned a lot from my students not only about the language but cultural things and stuff like that uh yeah so i went in 2019 uh, and then, of course, the pandemic happened, which hindered uh, everything, all my plans of networking and meeting people and learning the language. But I did a language exchange every day with a group of people. Um, and uh, we we got past that. And uh, then uh, I just decided that after not being able to come home during the pandemic, during the summer, that I wanted to come home. I, I always had the plan that I wanted to come home and spend time with my family in the summertime when the school's closed. Mm -hmm. Because to me, I like Italy, and but I can't expect my whole entire family to fly for the whole summer and give up everything. <laughs> you know, and it, <laughs> I, it's just not feasible to have everyone, cousin, sister, brother, daughter, son, you know, grandkids, whatever. So I said, I'll just come home. And it's working out great because I also hate the heat. Uh, like the, the just real heavy heat in southern italy so it works out great for me and um so where do you uh, so where do you where do you live near cervinata near cervinata uh it's it's a town in the province and provincia di benevent so even though cervinata is avellino it's very close to cervinata um it's called airola it's a very small town like paesino it's very small there's like eight thousand people um but uh it's uh the school i work for has a school in cervinata and a school in in um I roll us. So basically I'm working some days during the week in uh, my grandparents, my mom's, my mom's sides, my mom's mother's sides town where her family came from. And then the other town where my bisnono was from, my great grandfather is right next to, but it's super tiny. It's like a thousand people, but uh, where I am, it's uh, 40 minutes. If you're not in traffic, it's 40 minutes from Naples. So it's good. three hours from Rome, 40 minutes from Naples, um, either by car or on the bus. Um, if you take the train, if it, it's not running right now, but uh, with under an hour. So um, I was looking in Corato because I actually found my, so I'll explain. My dad's father, when he had the arranged marriage with my grandmother and the three sons and had the, the first son from the first marriage, he, he died young, my grandfather. He was only 42 um and then there's these four sons and my grandmother's you know worked part-time as a seamstress in a place like down the street in Brooklyn but you sent the kids to work basically my father was working in a, a chicken factory he said and he showed it to me the other day he said that's where the chicken factory was we're like you were working in a factory in Brooklyn at seven years old yeah and I shined shoes too shined shoes we shined shoes we worked in the chicken factory I'm like yeah, my brother too. My brother, were, I said, oh my God. I mean, who knew in America in the 50s, kids were working in factories? I mean, yeah. So, you know, we have a lot of funny stories, but um, my grandmother's like, oh God, four kids. I don't have a good level of English. How am I going to work? So she needs to get married. So she had another arranged marriage. Um, I don't know if the families knew each other. I'm assuming... So that word of mouth or something, but maybe they did know each other because this was in the 50s. So then he came over 
uh, she went, oh, my dad said he remembers she went for three months. So I guess she got to know him, her second husband, which is my step grandfather. Cause I never knew my real grandfather. He, my father was two when he died. Um, on my, uh, so I got gypped on the grandpa department, mm -hmm. but at least I had, um, uh, my step grandfather and then they had three more kids. So altogether she had, there were seven siblings, but she physically had six, but I think they still were quite poor, um, based on my dad telling me, you know, hand me downs and you know, you get the shirt with someone else's initial on it and you're just like, I'm not wearing this. And then you have a fight with your mom about it, you know? Uh, yeah, but they, you know, thank God they beca all became, you know, successful people in life, but it was a hard, hard way to grow up based on what he's told us. Um, and uh, it, this is interesting. My dad, when he went to kindergarten or first grade, they were like, uh, were you born in this country? Because uh, you have a very thick Italian accent. And he's like, what are you talking about? I was born here. But he picked it up from his his uh, mom and dad and stepfather. And um, he said up until college, someone uh, there was like a linguistic professor said, to him are you a native english speaker and he said yeah and the guy was like well i detect uh you know a foreign accent so uh, it's completely gone now but i that's just amazing to me that just think about the way they grew up was almost as if they were in southern italy that happened to my cousin's ah, son so it's my not that rare from, yeah from italy and the my cousin's son used to was basically not raised by my by by my my aunt and uncle from from Torito, but that he spent most of his time with them. So when he went to school, they asked him that they they said, where, where was he born? See, <laughs> he was born I know, because it doesn't really matter where you were. I mean, if you look at my Uncle Jimmy, Vincenzo, of course, is Jimmy here. Jimmy was born, Uncle Jimmy was born in Italy, uh, came here when he was eight months old. But I always say there's really no difference between the two of them, my dad being the first born in America and him being born in Italy. Because he was born in Italy, but he was, he was a baby. He was on the ship at eight months old. He didn't, it doesn't remember anything about being born there, you know? So I said, you guys are like equal, you know? It's like he was not even born in Italy. But at the same time, it's like you were both born in Italy because you're being raised by these, you know, immigrant Southern Italians who have this, you know, certain ways of of, of being that they're not going to change just because they're in Brooklyn, you know? Yeah, and um, and, it, and it's funny because now my, my dad's siblings, three of his siblings, his older siblings were born in Italy. I, I didn't know his... His my uncle because he died when I was very mm. very young, um, but my aunt who was probably ten when she came over, she never had a hint of any accent. No, like, no, it's interesting. It's interesting. Um, obviously, uh, for example, also my mom's mother, like I said, was born in Little Italy, uh, but was completely bilingual, so she would only speak Neapolitan at home with the parents, um, and then obviously learned English in school. And when she, again, when you speak both languages like that. Uh, from birth, I guess, you know, I mean, also being an English teacher, I can see who heard English as a baby because there's a few kids in school. I'm like, do you have an, did you live in England or America? And they're like, oh, my mom's British. And I said, I could tell your English, the, the way you, uh, you know, reproduce this, uh, pronunciation stuff is so different than the others who didn't have exposure to the language. Um, so well, yeah, my parents used thing. to, my parents used to fight because my father was the family was from Naples. My mother's was from Bari, and they used to fight all the time. Who's, yeah. speaking, the, who's speaking the right Italian? And I exactly. know now that it was, me and me I know it was my father. <laughs> <laughs> well, definitely the Napolitano is definitely more, more, uh, more heard. I guess we can say. Um, well, I and, understand and my more Napolitan. My, my mm. father's family came from. They they weren't farmers. They were mm. aristocrats in yeah. Naples. And stuff. I remember so, you told me that. Yeah. yeah. So they spoke a they spoke a higher level, but you know the Bares is. I used to think it was Italian, you know, when I hear it. I and now I know it's, they yeah. would cut, you know, they cut everything off. Everything is like, I know so Napolitan and... too, because uh, the last uh, vowel sound, unless it has an accent, is a schwa. So it's uh, uh, about everything. So, you know, I'm taking Napolitan lessons because I love the language and I've already got a pretty high level in Italian now. So it's safe for me because I already know um, because of where I live. A lot of my friends speak Neapolitan to me on the phone. We'll be talking in Italian and they'll just switch to the Neapolitan. And I have no problem because I have had exposure to it, not by my grandparents, but living in Italy. Uh, my grandma just said, like, I spent the basta, you know, 
yelling at us type of things it wasn't yeah, like yeah. let's have a conversation about you know what I you know, like to do I on know. saturday no it wasn't that, you know um but I'm yeah so, it's, um, i'm it's so pissed that they didn't teach us i mean i oh, struggle to learn it in, that, in... let me tell you uh this is my i was just leaving messages for my friends about this uh, a couple of days ago because italians in italy don't understand why we don't speak our parents grandparents great parents um, because they don't understand how difficult it was for Italian, especially obviously coming from Southern Italy. Uh, there was already racism towards Italians in this country since way, way back since the New Orleans lynchings of 11, mm -hmm. well, I think they were Sicilian, right? Uh, Italian, yeah. But they were Southern yeah. Italian, that's Italy. I mean, so Sicilian or not, it's Italy, Italians. And so they were, had this shame. And then you, you put on top of that, World War II, uh, you know, what side of the war was Italy on? Not the side of America. <laughs> so, you know, again, what my dad never legally changed his name, but doesn't doesn't use Ricardo. He's Richard here on his documents. And I said, but you guys, like all of a sudden it just changed naturally. And he said, yeah. But when I went in the army, the woman was like, you're not Richard, you're Ricardo. And he was like, it's the same. And the girl says, no, 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 no. She wasn't Italian American. She was, you know, didn't know. And she went and asked a uh, higher up who was Italian American. And he came over. He said, no, 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 no. It's the same name. It's, it's Italian for Richard. Leave it alone. He doesn't, because he didn't want to go around with Ricardo on the, on the placard, you know, on a, on a shirt. Because mm -hmm. even this is probably like the fifties or sixties. I mean, it's still, they still wanted to just be Americanized, you know? And my grandparents too started, not all of them, but the males started using Lewis because I two grandpa Luigi. <laughs> they start, excuse me, they started using Lewis. My grandma Romilda, she would just go by Ro. <coughs> Romilda's not that common, but you know, it's kind of hard to change. Uh, and Rosa just went by Rose. So, you know, my, my mother's Carmela, she didn't change it. And I said, I love that name. It's my favorite Italian name for a woman. And she goes, I'm not particularly fond of it. I never liked it. But I think just because people maybe, you know, teased and stuff, because it's not a common name in America. My, my grandma, my, my, not my grandma, my, um, my uncle's wife, my aunt uh, Dolly, uh, her, she was Italia. You did oh, not, you yeah. did not call her Italia you're I know. a dead person if you said I know it. I had a student named Italia and uh I was like wow that's such a beautiful name to call and then I was thinking yeah in America yeah yeah and you know like you said I mean she was born 1918 or something like that yeah, so as a kid like you now. know she must have got teased or whatever of course because people were mean you know and 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 online you know you see this sentiment that oh oh uh there was a um, a guy from africa on instagram the other day talking about they said where are you from and he said italy because i guess he was born or moved to mm -hmm. italy and then he started saying some things in italian and some of the comments were very nasty towards italian americans oh he's more italian than italian americans and he speaks better they don't know anything and i and i started explaining to this person in italian i said look i didn't speak italian when i was a kid i didn't my grandparents didn't even speak italian they spoke dialects of languages. And and I said, you have to understand, you don't know this because you don't know about Italian-American history. There are books. There's a book called La Storia. It's written in English, but I'm sure you can find an Italian copy. I said, and it tells you all about the history. And you can just ask some people. Instead of having stereotypes that everyone's into the um, worshiping the mafia, no one knows the language, and no one's interested, and no one cares. That's not true. I said, you're going by small... A representation of people uh, you, you can't you can't do you can't generalize just like i won't generalize you you know um as italians um and she says oh no i'm not you know being uh, judgmental and i said you're not i said but there's a lot of this and and i've been talking about it recently with a few different people pure hatred just if you say I'm Italian American, oh, you're disgusting. You don't know your language. You don't you don't respect. Uh, you don't want to know the culture. You think you're more Italian than in Italy. Not not me personally, but I said, but that's not true. You're you're generalizing. You know, people make videos for Instagram and Facebook to get comments, to get likes. Half of the things people say are not, are not even true. You know, yeah. uh, so you know you need to. What's the best way to to get to know? people that are different from you or maybe that you think mm, oh, are so removed you know why don't you make 
a language exchange group like I do. Italian Americans come and we meet Italians and we talk about a topic, but we also talk about, you know, our, what we, our cultures and how they're different. And, you know, it's, I, I had a, some a, are, are jealous, you know, there's jealousy involved too, because, you know, my family left and did well in America and your family stayed there and maybe they're not doing well. I got a, I got a comment helpful. on YouTube just yesterday. I was having this with mm. guy. He was obviously, he's, he was Italian and he was, um, same thing, you know, you Italian American, you're not Italian. And I said, nobody said, well, we're going to say we were Italian. We don't want to be Italian. We're Italian American. But, <laughs> but his, his whole comment was based around when I do the thumbnail for the videos, I have the Italian flag and then I have the, you know, people. And I said, What's I said, we're not, name? we're not trying to be Italian. We're not saying we're Italians. And, and, and he, I couldn't make him understand. And no, I said, because you we're, can't. We're, <laughs> I said, I we're proud of our heritage, yeah. but but the converse of it there, and I told them, I said, you know, my cousins in Italy that I didn't never knew, they didn't treat me like that when I saw them. Uh, the same. I found, we found my dad's cousins. Remember I told you that my dad's father died when he was two. Uh, when my grandmother remarried, uh, obviously she stopped for well, whatever reason. They didn't keep in contact with the, with that family. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I was doing some research on my grandpa and I found, my dad didn't even know his grandparents' names. I found wow. them. I said, you know, by the way, I found out who you're named after your father's, um, your father's brother, Ricardo. And, you know, my uncle, Tony, uh, Antonio, the first born with the first other, other wife of my grandpa. Um, I said, he was named after his father because your grandfather's name is Antonio. And I started looking and I said, you know, your dad had a lot of uh, siblings. I mean, I know, you know, some of them because they came to America, but there's more who stayed in Italy. And uh, I contacted, I don't know if you know Bella Italia in Benevento, and yes, Alessandro. Yes. Yeah. So yes. I contacted Alessandro because I already, oh, he, um, did, he did some of mine. He helped with some of oh, my Oh, yeah, stuff. yeah. He's, he is fabulous at yeah. finding people. And I said, look, I called people myself. I wrote letters. I talked to this guy, Massimo Olivieri. No, it's not a relative. No, it's not a relative. I said, look, somewhere along the line, we're probably related, but you're not the family I'm looking for because I know who, exactly who they are. And Alessandro called uh, when he did his research and he called and um, the guy has uh, my dad's first cousin, his son has the same name as my dad because they're named after the same person because uh, my uh, my dad's <laughs> uncle, it was this guy's grandfather. And when Alessandro called, he said, oh, my God, I've been looking for them online on Facebook. I've been typing. Oh, my God, are they coming? And when we got there, we didn't know that Alessandro had found them and um. I think I'd sent you the pictures when they were hugging and everyone was just crying because this is like 75 years later yeah. that they're mm -hmm. meeting up. And uh, my uh, my dad's first cousin, unfortunately, had passed in 2008. One of the first cousins. There are others. We did meet some other ones on my grandmother's side. Um, but it was really like, I guess uh, I was so happy. And I said, I, I, I wish that we did it earlier because I just didn't know. You know, I just uh, there's like things going on in life here. I just didn't know that they were there. I met my dad's first cousins last year. I had yeah, no idea. Did. I didn't know that women existed. It, I know. I it's like crazy. Nuts. Oh, you went through the same thing as, as we did that. My dad says, I'm so happy. And, you know, of course, I was the pusher of all this. I said, we got to go. I said, we got to go find them. I'm talking to the genealogist. I said, <laughs> I said, man, I know that they're there. I just don't know who they are because there's so many. And he was able to go and, you know, find out. And um, they were so happy. And and then we went to go see them again. And we they, they cooked for us. And um yeah, well, we'll go back again. Um, I stayed with them a few times because body is not that far from Naples. So I was able to go and stay. And, um, you know, they invited me to for the Macolata. Uh, you know, they celebrate the Macolata Conception. Like mm -hmm. if it's, yeah, yeah. I was, it was on a weekend. Deal, yeah. yeah, yeah. So I was able to go <laughs> and have the big dinner. And, you know, they said, wow, your Italian got so much better than the first time we met you. I said, yeah, it was only like a beginner when I met them. But, you know, it was just, it was just amazing to, to meet them. And we also met some um, more, a little more distant cousins on my mom's side. Cause like I said, most of the family came here, even the great grandparents. So it was um, like my mom's third cousin. And she actually gave us like, um, uh, um, what are they called for when you, the shears for tailoring those big, I actually have it. If you want to see it, it's really big. Oh, I don't like, know what yeah. Doing. Yeah. She gave us that. Uh, two of those and two um, like the irons with the carbon inside, because she said oh. that those were actually used by uh, my great great grandmother 
in the tailor shop that they had. And I was able to see um, also a mirror that was in the barber shop of a, uh, my my third great grandfather that I had known already that he, I had known already that he was a barber because I was doing all of that research I did by myself. Um, and uh, because I'm a little bit, you know, obsessed with like finding stuff and family history. Yeah. Welcome you can understand. <laughs> and I was like, Oh my gosh, I, I think I might've sent you that picture too of me looking in a mirror. Maybe. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Think, that's the barbershop mirror. And I was saying how many guys went through here looking at the beard and the haircut, you know, and uh, including my own, relatives uh so we had met them that was like my mom's third cousin i think uh she was yeah second or third cousin she was really really cool too and then another cousin um that wind up being the monsignor at the church where near to where i live um it was before i moved though um but um uh, he brought us to see my uh my mom's grandmother's um baptismal record in the church and all that stuff and yeah, so it was really amazing trip in 20, 2017. Yeah, and um, we just kept in touch with with mo most of them. Obviously, not the month senior. So now do you have you have your you have your citizenship. Yeah, yeah, we, I did it with Alessandro. Oh, with so when Alessandro. did you? How, when, how long ago did you get it? Twenty seventeen. I, I think I, I was recognized. It I wish I did it before. Wait, hold on. Uh, yeah, before the pandemic, because so you uh, so you go way back with Alessandro. He he did yeah. mine probably before the pandemic. Probably. I guess it was around the same time when, yeah. when he was helping I think me. I started talking to him in 2016 uh, uh, first yeah. about, um, I was more interested in finding the relatives first and foremost. But since about like uh, 2010, I was really into um, like doing, uh, well, I had a boyfriend in Ireland. So uh, my Irish boyfriend wanted me to move there. So I started looking into um, citizenship and I knew that I was eligible. Uh, from one of the male lines. And then I would have had two 1948 cases if yeah, I didn't have him. Too. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Which is, <laughs> it doesn't mean nothing, you know. Uh, yeah. And I talked to I, Alessandro. I, yeah. I could do 40, 1948, but my brother can't. I know, that's weird, right? Yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> it's crazy. But anyway, uh, yeah, so I wound up working with Alessandro first for the, um, for the finding relatives. And then I said, oh, well, I already know you. So, you know, I'm already coming to Italy anyway. So, uh, yeah. And um, so, so, so I have to ask you. So, have you been to Avellino, the city? The yes, city of once or twice. Yes. Yeah. So you know the you know the the, the Palazzo Caracciolo. Do you know the big Palazzo? Uh, the big square? no, no, no. I I didn't really walk around too much. I think I went there just to like get the bus or something with my friends. So well, I don't if know. You, if, if you go I'll back, go back though, you yeah. see you see the Palazzo in the big square, the main square. <laughs> That's my seventh great grandparents built the Palazzo. <gasps> wow they were the princes my my grandparents were the princes of avellino wow so uh, marino marino the second Fra marino francesco francesco marino uh wow and, and, then, and then there's this guy commenting that you're not italian i mean give me, yeah. i mean i mean <laughs> I, I'm didn't saying... go, I didn't even go down that route with him <laughs> i know but, excuse me i'm nobility <laughs> but if you go to the duomo they took us to the duomo there and and they had uh there were these there were three chairs in it covered in red velvet and behind the altar. And yeah. they said, that's the priest sit in that chair when they, you know, with the bishop, when the bishop comes, they'll sit in those chairs and everything. And then they said, but those chairs were your ancestors chairs wow. that they used. And so Letizia, who's good friends with Alice, who set the whole thing up for us. Can they sit in the chairs? Yeah, sure. I sit in the chairs. Of course. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> People don't understand. In Italy, they don't do all this white glove stuff. And I know. We're more, <laughs> I think as Italian Americans, because we were removed from Italy, like family is removed from it. It's more nostalgic. Like this woman, she couldn't wait to get rid of the scissor and, oh, the, the, and, the, and the iron. She says, please, I'm cleaning up my house. I'm 85 years old. Just please take it. And I, I was like, how am I going to get this home to New York when I go back? You know, but I, um, I wind up wrapping it in like a box and then paper and put it in the check suitcase. Obviously, yeah, as long you can't as bring that on the plane and kill somebody check, with it. Okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but I was just afraid that they were going to turn it down because of that the weight. But no, it was fine. Well, but I it, have, it was really I, nice my, to have. My grandfather and and uh, his brother they had an embroidery shop in yeah. little in not Little Italy on Fourteenth Street in Manhattan. Uh, and they started, I guess, in the twenties sometime. Mm. And when I met my cousin, that I again somebody I didn't know. I mean, we lived. Her yeah. grandmother lived five blocks from where I lived in Queens in, in Flushing. Yeah. 
Yeah. I didn't, uh, I remember my father mentioning Aunt, Aunt Petrus lives there, you know, but whatever went over my head. Uh, but her grandmother had saved beads from the shop. So, uh -huh. and she, she gave us, she brought my sister and my cousin and I all beads from the shop. And, you know, when you come across something like that, yeah. Especially when it was the business, you know? Exactly. That's what I said. This is like their livelihood. And yeah. the, the worst part of it, though, was, and I wish she never told me this. She goes, the, the older woman, she said, Diana, oh, que pecado. I said, what? She goes, about a month ago, I threw out all the pictures. Uh, they were all of them, your great great grandmother too, with the um with the measuring oh tape and yeah. all of them in the shop. And I said, please don't tell me that. I said, Do you understand? <laughs> I'm like an amateur genealogist. I'm putting all these pictures in the chart in the in the tree, and you're telling me you threw them away. She says, I didn't know you guys wouldn't come here. I said, Oh my god, thanks for the irons, but you know, please don't tell me that. Well, they, <laughs> they told so me bad. that in Italy too. There was one. Yeah. One of my grandmothers, I, I guess, must have been, I don't know if it was a cousin or an uncle or something like that, that supposedly had all the artifacts and all yeah. of that kind of stuff. And, you know, and this is from a noble family and they all just, it just all disappeared. You know, they yeah. have a couple of buttons and things like that. But, yeah. um, you know, their houses are still there. Yeah. It's, it's you know, it's amazing to just go see these places. And they were... They were big houses. They weren't little small houses. No, no. And you know what's interesting too is that, um, like I said, my dad's side, my dad's parents are more like you know, um, farmers and, and and like not peasants, but they weren't rich. But my mom's side on my my uh, maternal grandfather's side were um, they were like artigiani. They were sarti. They were they were they had money. He would yeah, make clothes yeah. for. Um, rich people. And there's another story that they made the vestments, uh, whatever the priests wear for the Vatican. Yeah. Now, I, I haven't proven this theory. It's been told to me by several people, but I know that my grand great grandfather received a, um, like an award, a medal, uh, from Rome and Paris for his work. And, um, the funny story is that they said, um, uh, so they had come earlier, my mom's side, uh, before World War II, uh, I think during World War One or, or shortly after, they had trouble paying their suppliers because they would buy all this fabric and they would make the suits and make the dresses. And then these people would say, well, we, we can't pay for the items. Mm -hmm. So he couldn't pay his suppliers. So he said, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go to New York for six months. I'm going to pay off all my debts. And he did. He paid all the debts. Uh, so my grandma, my great grandmother was still in Italy um, with the kids in their you know, house or whatever. And he calls her up and he says, uh, sell everything, get on the boat with the kids. And that's how my great grandfather wound up coming over. But um, uh, she didn't want to. And they went to Harlem and she was crying. I said, could you imagine you have your own, basically your own farm, your own house, beautiful furniture. And, and I have all the tapes from my great aunt talking. Cause she remembers, she was like 14, I think, um, when she came and she was saying like, you know, the peasants used to come and ask if they could take fruit from the trees and mm -hmm. could they have this? And she would give, and, um, you know, then she winds up, I'm not, I'm not knocking Harlem, but I'm just saying it's different. And, and you got these, you know, for six or seven kids running around and, you know, you're you're used to having them in the, you know, and out in the fresh air in Italy. Uh, so that was just their story. And and then he winds up working for, uh, I don't remember. I have all the records somewhere. You know, different different uh, uh, tailor shops and and um and uh, and manufacturers. And you know, the kids would go mostly the girls. They would go on the train into the city, take the ferry, and they would bring all the stuff. Because then my they uncle, would you, my, my cousin used yeah. to do that. Yeah. Oh, used to take it the was train normal. Into yeah, yeah. And she was uh, my great aunt. Um, I mean, she lived to like 105 or something. But so she was able to tell a lot of more stories that my grandfather died when I was a year old. So I didn't really know that much. But she she told a lot of stories on the CD interview that she did, which I, I wish I would have done that with my grandparents. But anyway, uh, <laughs> at least we have that. And uh, she was like, you know, he turned the first um he worked in the city for a while but then he had like some finger injury with he pricked himself and it got infected i don't know it was a whole big drama and he wound up working from home and made the whole living room like people would come to get fitted and and i was crazy but then he still worked for the city um and then my grandfather didn't become a tailor he became a pharmacist 
um oh, wow, and right. he yeah and he owned um Arakar pharmacy which is very famous still there um uh he opened that himself and he was Gigi and everybody loved him I I only have some pictures of me uh with him when I was a baby but I don't remember him really because I was like a, maybe a year and a half when he died um but I, I I still meet people who are like I'm from Arakar I'm from South Beach and and I'm like do you know Gigi and they said yeah and I was like that's my grandpa and they'll start telling me my mom loved Gigi you know so and I have pictures and stuff um of him and he wind up uh, when he passed away my grandmother wind up giving the business to his intern you know very like old school Italian type of thing mm -hmm. she wasn't like I'm gonna sell this for a profit she's like no he wanted Johnny to have the store because jo Johnny was his in 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 intern um, and when Johnny graduated, he gave it. And Johnny just, I think, sold it maybe two or three years ago. And he, he, they had some old pictures and stuff that they found in the basement. So uh, that was really interesting. But um, yeah, there's just so much. Um, even within my small family, small, I say, you know, just one family. There's so many stories. Like uh, if you put them all together of all the Italian Americans, every little. I mean, and I, I haven't even told you everything. I mean. You have, to write yeah. in a, you have to write a book. I'm going to write a book. Like, what this I is, did. <laughs> you want to hear this? This is the craziest thing. My dad. Okay. So being that his father died, my dad was two years old. Um, the plot with my grandfather uh, was left. Let me see. Wait. My grandfather wind up being buried in the plot he bought when his first wife died in childbirth. But nobody knew, <laughs> nobody <laughs> knew that his first wife was buried there or nobody told my dad. And my dad goes, I want to go to the, see my dad's headstone. So he goes to the cemetery and he goes, hi, I'd like to see uh, Louis, you know, Louis Oliveri, Luigi, uh, Viet, um, and they said, um, yeah, uh, oh yes, uh, Luigi Olivieri, wife and unborn child. And my father goes, what are you talking about? It's my, they said, Oh my God, he's buried with the first wife because it makes sense. My grandma didn't have any money. He had already mm. bought the plot and she says, all right, we'll put him in there where he, he bought it. Yeah. But my dad never put, I, I don't know if my other uncles knew and just, or maybe they might've not e even thought about it. Um, but uh, that was crazy. We were just like, you had to do what you had to do back then. My grandmother could not afford to be jealous and say, oh gosh, he's going to be buried with his first wife and then the unborn child. Oh, it, oh you know, stillborn. Um, it's crazy. I mean, there's just so many little things that just make it. And in one way they make you laugh, but then it's also sad. Cause I'm like, Oh gosh, you know, that must've been really hard for my grandmother, you know, just come. And she, she naturalized on her own. I think but maybe you know, like <laughs> seven years after he died. Yeah. But like people, like you said, people were more practical back then. Right. It wasn't like, Oh gosh, it's not right to put him. It was like, it's paid for. You have no money. Yeah. You're yeah. a widow with seven kids put him in there you know and uh you know it's just my dad was shocked you know he's just, still to this day it's just like i can't believe i mean it's it. like it's it's you know the, the 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 widows would marry their their husband's brother i know i know i'm surprised that I, didn't you know, happen. that wasn't yeah, normal in, in italy yeah i mean the, the crazy thing was some people say my dad would say wow you know my grandmother was so young and my grand and my uh, sorry my my mother was so young and my father was so old i said it was the way I said, why yeah. would he marry someone 40 years old? They thought maybe she was going to die next. So they find somebody young and available who, you know, well, not only that, they wanted that, you know, they had find somebody who could have kids. That Exactly. That's the, exactly. Right. Yeah. 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 So, you know, he wanted to have more kids and, you know, I don't know why. Uh, <laughs> no, no, I don't know why. I guess they need more hands on the farm. But anyway, he, he, my grandfather worked is uh, an ice man, which a lot of buddies, he, did my grandfather too my grandfather yeah yeah and then he worked his way up to working in uh a, like a pantry i guess like in the commissary of a restaurant or hotel uh and then he became a uh like a chef for restaurants and that when he died that's what he was doing he um he died of a, like a something he would have survived now something with the kidneys um and the wife uh the first wife i mean i ordered her death certificate and when it came i cried because i said we're all here because this woman died. I mean, if she would have lived, we, I wouldn't exist, you know? Yeah, right. And it just really, I got so emotional because, you know, it's my, it's my cousin's grandmother and it's my uncle's mother, but I never really thought about her. How, like, you know, what important person she is. Like she, she didn't die. She hadn't died. We would not be here. You know, um, I'm any, you know, it's just, life is just crazy, but you well, know, my, poor, my poor great grandfather, girl. my, my grandmother's father, my, my paternal great-grandfather he 
he was 60. He married somebody 30. And there's a rumor going around that. Yeah. I don't know if it's true, but somebody said that she was like, she was either, she was either like the servant or the nanny or something. I've like seen that. that too on my family tree. Because, it was like my great, great. Yeah. The 65 yeah. with a 30 year old. I know. I don't, I don't when, understand it either. When my great grandmother passed away, my youngest, uh, my grandmother's youngest sibling was only a year old. Wow. And they, and they, but they had money. Yeah. So yeah. he must've had somebody, you know, he, maybe she took care of the kids again. That's kind of, that's kind of the yeah. story. Yeah. I don't know if it's true or not, but yeah, my, my great grandfather, yeah. he was, he was illegitimate. Oh, because I found two records. I found two women's names and I'm like, I don't know. I, what, was it just that he me. wasn't married in the church or he was truly not married? Well, no, my, my, uh, the parents, the, yeah, my, so my great, great grandfather from the best I could figure out, he had some sort of an affair, oh. but he oh. was from a noble family. So on my, it, you know, my, my great grandfather's birth record, it's, it, it says, you know, that he was, um, uh, filial naturale. So, oh yeah. Yeah. Right. So he was illegitimate. But somehow he's now got this, my grandfather's, my, my great, great grandfather's second or well, first wife, right? The person he married, it also has her name then as wow. the mother. So there's two it's records. Weird. It's weird. And like, I still, still can't figure out. Some people are saying that, well, because he was from a rich noble family, he was able to get this records changed. Yeah. But it's quite clear that, he was illegitimate. Yeah. Uh, and somehow then he got legitimized, you know, somehow. Yeah. Yeah. That's wild. I mean, yeah, we haven't had anything. I haven't discovered anything like that, but um, I did, I did think it was really interesting that um, my dad's grandfather, the one that we had found um, and actually my dad's cousins in, in body took us to the cemetery and we see this picture of this guy um, and he's got like this long beard and it's like, Oh gosh, he doesn't even look anything like you guys, you know, but he actually, uh, I don't know, winds up having like 12 kids because he remarried. And then my grandfather had a sibling with the same name. Mm. And I'm like, <laughs> sometimes it's like the sibling dies and they rename it another kid, yeah. but no, it was like, they were both alive <laughs> at the same time. And I'm like, well, maybe that was the second wife's father's <laughs> name or whatever. I was like, this is so weird. You know, like people all with the same name, like that, that Luigi, no, it's not, that's not your grandfather. This Luigi is, you know, <laughs> you go crazy. But one of the reasons why I wanted to get a good level of Italian was, is that I wanted to understand all these records as well. I mean, besides yeah, just yeah. being obsessed with, with learning, um, I'm just like, so, I need to, I need to. <laughs> so before we go, since you, since you, yeah live most of the time in Italy. I would live there permanently if my wife would let me. She yeah. doesn't, but I'd go back there in a minute and stay there. What advice do you give to people who are either thinking about moving there or want to retire there? Oh, or... yeah, yeah. So um, do your research on the town and the area. Like how um, how connected it is, how's the transportation, and like how are the people? Because sometimes... Uh, people are friendly, like in shops when you buy stuff, but they don't want to be friendly, like um, to invite you to their house. Mm -hmm. So that's that's really depends on the individual, but um, it also depends on like the community, like how um, how their mentality is in that area. Are they open? Are they type of a uh, community that is like open to let's say foreigners or open to different people or people that might not be permanent because there's I've noticed it that in certain places people are very different um in uh in how they uh, I'm trying not to say anything negative the people are different <laughs> in different places <laughs> so if you can go spend as much time as you can before permanently going there uh meaning visiting there go, for example I go to Naples all the time I'm in Naples every Saturday every Sunday every time I'm off of work except for when I'm in New York I'm in Naples I'm making friends in Naples I'm talking to people I'm uh you know walking by myself at all hours of the day and night I'm taking public transportation I'm going and talking to random people in in in, in bars and in restaurants I would say I know 
that I won't have any surprises if I were to decide to move to Naples tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And I didn't do that before I moved. I'm not saying I made a mistake, but um, uh, I just think that's a good thing because there were certain things I discovered uh, after moving. Uh, yeah. as, as transportation and also uh, uh, different mentalities and different types of areas, like let's say a mountain area versus a seaside or a big city, small city, uh, not talking north and south or anything like that, because this can even happen in the south. Uh, so my advice would be just do some research about the area you want to buy in and maybe rent first if you can. Oh, stay for if, if you don't have citizenship or a visa if you're retired stay for three months first get a feel for the area that you chose um and it doesn't have to be where your parents or grandparents or great grandparents came from but it is nice I just say let me keep staying uh, let me keep on working in fashion and move to milano i could have done that yeah. i could yeah easily i've had a lot of 20 something years experience in fashion i, I would have found a job in fashion in two seconds but I wasn't, I didn't move to Italy for the money. It's for the experience, um, you know, experience and uh, the language and just uh, also getting to know like modern Italian culture. Cause the culture that I know is my grandparents, well, well you know, what, how they, their life was and how they adapted their life in America. So it's not, I didn't, I guess, it, you know, recipes. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I know those, <laughs> you know, all the Neapolitan recipes, but yeah. Um, yeah. So yeah, yeah. Just do some research and and uh, don't bring too many things with you. That's another big one. I brought way, way. I still have a lot of stuff here, but I'm trying to go through it and get rid of some stuff that I don't use. But I mean, I brought two suitcases, but then I brought another one after I came back another time after a visit to New York. And then I said, you know, the style is a little different in Italy. The cobblestone is different. You did need different type of shoes. Um, you know, it's a lot of stuff could be bought there. You don't need to bring your whole entire kitchen with you. And, you know, unless you have something you really love, it's not worth it. You know, so sell it, donate it, store it, whatever you got to do. But yeah, don't bring too much. That's, those are my two, my two, you know, minimalism. I'm not a minimalist, but I wish I was in this case. Cause I said, like, wouldn't it be great to just travel with one suitcase and yeah. every year move and every year move to a different part of Italy and be like, this year I'm gonna be in uh in the north, the next year I'm gonna be in the south, Sicily. Oh yeah, you know, that would be great to be the more of like a nomadic type of lifestyle. But yeah. Um well listen, this has been fun. I mean, I could do this for another five hours, but I know, me too. I was thinking, <laughs> wow, we could go on and on. But yeah, I think you kind of got the idea. <laughs> but I do appreciate you taking yeah. the time and that and that's that was really good advice at the end there. Anytime. So. Yeah, yeah. Just from experience. I mean, yeah, there's some other stuff. Don't be too nice. You know, don't be afraid to be, especially as a woman in southern Italy, don't be and if you allow me to say this, don't be polite and say oh sorry oh you know be stern because when you're too nice they don't understand because italian women when a guy bothers them or asks them out they they tell them i won't say what they say but you know they're stern <laughs> therefore they're they're, so, so they're forceful like that yeah. Act like you come from New York. That's exactly. So, you know, as an American, sometimes even a New Yorker, when you're in a foreign place, you want to be polite. Because, I mean, in New York, I'll tell somebody off. But I'm like, I'm in a, I'm in a foreign country. It's not my country. I'm going to be nice. It doesn't work. You have to be, you have, you know, you have to curse or anything. But, you know. It, be stern. Be stern. No, I'm not interested. Thank you. Yeah. I told yeah. you I'm not interested. And that, and that goes for people trying to sell you stuff, too. You know what I say? Oh, they come up to me. You want to buy a bracelet? But I said, I don't want anything. And I'll say in Italian and English to them. It depends who it is. But I'll say, I don't want anything. Thank you. I don't want anything. And because if you start going, ah, oh, no, they're going to try it, you know. So yeah. yeah. Anyway, that's just, just be, just don't be mean, but be, be stern. Don't, don't be afraid to be strong because if you're nice, it could be taken as, as weakness. So, yeah. unfortunately. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, listen, thanks again. I appreciate it. Hi, everyone. This is Bob Sorrentino. Just letting you know that my new book, Farmers and Nobles, is now available for sale on www.italiangenealogy.blog backslash Farmers and Nobles, or you can find the link in the podcast notes. Thanks for listening.